Hello and welcome back to another video from your University of New Money, University of New Mercy. Today is day 299, um, but I might make this video bigger than the day 300 tomorrow. Um, 300 sounds like a better number. It's round and very significant, but 299, 99 is a lucky number for me. I graduated class of 99 from high school. Yeah, that dates me, but it uh, feels like yesterday, which also dates me. Dates me. But anyway, uh, since it's Sunday as opposed to Monday, it's going to be easier to do a longer video tonight. So I think I'm going to cram most of my good content in tonight and then probably do a short tomorrow for day 300. We'll see. But Without any further ado, let me start sharing my screen because I do have a lot to get to in today's video. Uh, should be working now. Okay. And again, for my DC friend is I think each time A comes, uh, she's a fan of Justin Timberlake. Um, I'm sure growing up as a teenage girl or whatever, uh, I know I got to see Justin Timberlake and Taylor Swift uh, with her and another friend in uh, Staples Center in Los Angeles in 2015. So that was very special to me. So yeah, I'm a fan of Justin Timberlake too. He's always supported the PGA Tour and seems like a pretty cool guy. I'd hang out with him totally. But anyway, let me make sure I'm sharing sounds for this. I uh, hate to get this video off to a horrible start like that. So anyway, it's going to be May. It's going to be May. It's going to be May. It's gonna be May. Okay. So anyway, what kind of May is this going to be? Very interested. And so I'm going to try to get my thoughts in this video. Of course, I'm not a fortune teller. I have no idea. Could Bitcoin hit $100,000 if people get on board with this 401k and putting your 401k into Bitcoin? Sure. Even though I don't think the 401k thing will go into effect more until uh, later in the year. But still, um, you know, most likely I'd say the price is probably going to go down if Russia starts using nuclear weapons against uh, Ukraine uh, based on this FOMC meeting Tuesday and Wednesday, trying to get inflation under control as lately Bitcoin's been treated more like a tech stock. Uh, Michael Saylor talked about this on CNBC. So people trying to get out of tech stocks due to rising rates by the FOMC, it seems like Bitcoin's going to be treated the same way, even though Bitcoin is totally different than a tech stock. You all know that. But uh, like you said, there are three kind of investors, and I like Michael Saylor, smart, smart guy, uh, CEO of MicroStrategy, and he said the three main type of investors are the maximalists, which would be me, is I just buy Bitcoin, don't sell it, and I'm holding it long term. Uh, I'll probably use it in 10 years or whenever it hits a million dollars, I'll try to use it like a currency. It'll probably be very easy to use in the future as a currency, but as of right now, I'm buying and holding. I'm not a trader. Uh, but the other two types of buyers would be uh, see if I can remember this. I, I'm improvising in this video. So a lot of this I'm just doing off of memory. I know he said the other two types are like the traders who, again, just based on their mood, either think it's correlated with the rest of the market or uncorrelated with the rest of the market. And the latest sentiment is that Bitcoin is correlated with tech stocks. So with tech, tech stocks dropping heavily last week, as if you were paying attention to the stock market as it hit lows last week, I think the NASDAQ said some sort of uh, low not seen since 2008. I don't know exactly what low that would be. But anyway, you know, there's a lot of fear and uncertainty in the world in terms of the other investor in Bitcoin. Uh, I wish I could remember, you know what, forget this. I'm going to wing it. I'm going to look for that Michael Saylor video and share it with you all. I have 40 minutes in this video. You have time. Feel free to skip around. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you enjoy this kind of content. I appreciate all of your support. This should be easy to find because it was very recently, four minutes, got to be this. And yeah, this is based on the 401k plan apartment. stuff, which I want to share There's with you all anyway. In the bathroom. Good luck with the future in-laws tonight. Okay, sorry, Don't you have to listen it. to these ads. I can't skip this one. But yeah, let's, let me share this CNBC oh, no, 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 clip. No, no, no. Uh, I can't remember who Sarah Eisen or was with Michael Saylor. Uh, how do you no, not see Sarah Eisen. in terms of uh, I think her name's next Morgan. steps for Bitcoin and Bitcoin adoption? Well, look, Bitcoin's digital property, and that makes it the perfect asset for a retirement plan. It's less risky than bonds, than stocks, than you know, commercial real estate, than gold. It was kind of built for this. Most people are buying Bitcoin, they want to give it to their grandchildren or their great-grandchildren. So I think Fidelity's put their finger on an issue. There's 80 million Americans that currently own or have owned digital assets. 30% of institutions want to own these digital assets. A uh, 401k plan is a, is a pretty common thing for millions and millions of workers to use to save uh, in order to protect their family interest. And this is going to uh, fill, um, uh, fill an important vacuum.
mm. in the investment product market. Now, and I realize that MicroStrategy is technically a tech company, but it is also the largest publicly traded company uh, in terms of Bitcoin holdings. So are you expecting many of your employees to actually adopt this into the retirement plans? Yeah, there's been a lot of demand for this. They've been asking for it for quite a while. And so uh, it's a technical uh, challenge to offer 401k uh, savings plans. And Fidelity has overcome that challenge in offering a great product. So we're really, uh, really delighted to be able to offer it to our employees. So even if, as we're having this conversation, I mean, it was just last month that the U.S. Labor Department published guidance cautioning employers to, quote, exercise extreme care before they consider adding a cryptocurrency option to a 401k plan's investment menu. The fact that there is still so much hesitancy here, and I think a lot of it's been tied to historically the volatility we've seen in the price of Bitcoin. Um, what is it going to take from your viewpoint for the government to perhaps better understand or align itself uh, around cryptocurrency assets? You know, there's a lot, lot of fear and uncertainty around electricity, automobiles, airplanes, and the like uh, when those technologies arrived. Bitcoin's a digital transformation of property, of capital, of energy. It's like money at the speed of light on an open protocol. It's going to require a lot of education. And I think that as, uh, as regulators and, uh, and the society at large gets more educated, they'll get more comfortable that this is a much better way to do this than the 20th century technique. Michael, you mentioned obviously there is a, a core of people who, who certainly want to hold digital assets such as Bitcoin for the long term. I'm wondering uh, your read about how Bitcoin has traded. It's trading right now at levels first reached, let's say, 15 months ago after a massive surge, of course, before that. Uh, and it's really been in sync with other speculative uh, dollar-based assets like the NASDAQ. So what's the, what's the take on what's happening there? There's three types of investors in Bitcoin. There's the traders, there's the technocrats, and there's the, uh, there's the maximalists. The maximalists are, are buying the stuff to give to their grandchildren, and they just dollar cost average in, and they're all in already. So they don't control the market. The technocrats think it's the next big tech network like Google or Facebook. When it's the technocrats, that's what I was forgetting about. So the people who are just tech heavy, of course, they're going to be into Bitcoin. This is the technological revolution of monetary systems. They're feeling bullish on technology they're buying when they're feeling bearish on technology they're selling. The traders think it's either a correlated asset or an uncorrelated asset, the risk assets, depending on their mood. Right now, they think it's correlated to risk. And so if they're selling risk, they're selling Bitcoin. It's obviously not a tech stock. It is actually uh, the ultimate risk off asset in time over the course of four, five, six, seven years. Everybody figures it out. But right now, the traders and the technocrats control the market trading of Bitcoin. And it's, it's a function of the tug of war between them and the mood in the market. So we'll see what the mood in the market is next week um, and the rest of the month, the rest of the year, whatever time frame you're looking at. Um, because I have no self-control as I already spent half of my paycheck from Friday in crypto, but that means that I saved the other half of my money to spend over the next two weeks in crypto, just in case there's a huge dip based on the news from the FOMC, the craziness in Russia, Ukraine, or whatever reason could cause the stock market to crash, which now it seems like Bitcoin's pretty correlated with the stock market movement, just in terms of general fear in the world, in the economies around the world. Um, of course, Bitcoin just could just fall on its own because of other stuff I was gonna share with you all. Uh, this is the Warren Buffett one. Is not thrilled with Warren Buffett, who is the old, crusty, rich, white guy who you gotta fight against. Uh, the psychopath grandpa from Omaha. I believe that was uh, from Peter Thiel, one of those super awesome Bitcoin guys uh, quoted him as being that. But let me share this with you. I haven't actually watched this video in advance, but I hope it's the real thing. The title says that is, I believe, if you offered all the Bitcoin in the world for $25, Warren Buffett wouldn't take it. He had other negative things to say it. You know, in the past, he's called it rat poison squared. The one time I've given Buffett credit is, you know, he says he doesn't like to invest in things he doesn't understand, and clearly he doesn't understand Bitcoin. But the fact that he made this quote makes me think he might be getting senile and doesn't understand a lot of the things in the world. So let's see what he has to say here. Well, <laughs> I shouldn't answer any questions on the subject, but I will. <laughs> uh, you know, there's, there's all kinds of people watching this that are long Bitcoin, and there's nobody that's short. And Nobody, nobody wants their windpipe stepped on. I don't blame them. I don't like people to step on my windpipe. But I would say this, that if all the people, this, if the people in this room uh, 
owned all of the farmland in the United States. And you offered me a 1% interest in it. And you said for a 1% interest in all the farmland in the United States, uh, pay me, uh, pay our group. Um, well, let's see. Uh, pay us this bargain price, $25 billion. I'll write you a check this afternoon. $25 billion. Now I own 1% of the farmland. If you tell me you own 1% of the apartment houses in the United States <coughs> uh, and you offer me uh, a 1% interest, so I'll have a 1% interest <coughs> in all the apartment houses in the country, and you want whatever it may be for it, call it another $25 billion or something. I'll write you a check. You know, it's very simple. Now, if you told me you owned all of the Bitcoin in the world and you offered it to me for $25, I wouldn't take it because what would I do with it? Uh, I have to sell it back to you one way or another. I mean, maybe I'd be the same people, but it isn't going to do anything. The apartments are going to produce rental and, and the farms are going to produce food. And uh, uh, if I've got all the Bitcoin. You know, I'm back where whatever his name was, who may or may not have existed, was you know, 15 years ago. If I've got it all, he could create a mystery about it. But everybody knows what I'm like. I mean, so if I'm trying to get rid of it, you know, people will say, well, uh, you know, why should I buy some Bitcoin from you? <laughs> I mean, why don't you call it Buffett coin? You know, make your own or something. What? Do something. But uh, I'm not going to give you anything for it. And you'd be right, incidentally. But... That explains the difference between productive assets and something that depends on the next guy paying you more than the last guy got. Now, net, if you look at it, a lot of commissions have been paid, and there's, I mean, there's all kinds of frictional costs that are very real that somebody is paying. That's probably good enough. I don't know what else he has to say, but uh, one of the articles I read, I forget if, if I'm sharing it with all of you, is they think that's ironic that he wouldn't pay $25 for all the Bitcoin in the world, but he's willing to give you diabetes by promoting C's candy here. Interesting. So anyway, uh, of course, stupid Wall Street Journal wants me to pay money. I'm not doing that. Uh, this is criticizing uh, Fidelity offering Bitcoin as part of a 401k plan. Um, I've already talked about this before. You saw it in the CNBC interview with Michael Saylor. Is, you know, why would an employee put their 401k into something so volatile, so risky, which has lost so much value over the past six months? You know, what idiot in their right mind would put their 401k into Bitcoin? And you know, as I'm sharing with you in these videos, the long-term thinkers such as myself, Michael Saylor, Kathy Wood, I'm sharing a clip with her later because I wanted to turn this video around for being so negative against Bitcoin toward the ultimate goal, the life-changing wealth you can achieve. If you can hold on to this until the year 2030 or so, you're going to be happy you did so. And so I don't know if there's anything else in this article I wanted to share with you, uh, but this sort of ties into the tech stock sinking last week, bond selling off while Bitcoin's been following that trend. Um, you know, we've been trading kind of within this $45,000 to $32,000 range for the past four months, it feels like. I mean, don't quote me on that. Um, I'm doing this off of memory. I can just go to my spreadsheet and look. Um, don't forget, you can find the spreadsheet at unm.nu or bronco.tv. I mean, we started the year at 47388 and then just doing a quick scroll through here, went down right away. In my spreadsheet, I think this is the day we actually hit 32,000. It was a quick dip. So I actually have the lowest price at 34,000 for this year. That's how little time we were at the $32,000 level. If you missed out on that, you're not alone. And I think we're just hovering around this 40,000 range, back to 36,000, back up to 44,000, 38,000. So now we're at the beginning of March. 38,000, 40,000, way back up to 47,000, erased all of the losses for 2022, but here we are again going downward, 43,000, 41,000, and so now we're getting toward the end of the month, which is now today, May 1st, 38,000. So you can see that we've been trading within this fairly tight range for the past four months since the, since the beginning of the year. I'm going to leave this open because I want to go to the spreadsheet values with you later. Um, 
And again, don't forget, you can check out the website, unm.nu, bronco.tv. Check out all my good content, all the videos here. Uh, this is a golf spreadsheet. This is a PowerPoint from 2021 about crypto, still very applicable today. My first 30 day sober journey and all the stuff I went through. Three hour video, good stuff there. Uh, the spreadsheet tried here. Hopefully it says May 1st. If not, I'll have to update that through Wix, but it does say May 1st. So it is updated as of right now on the spreadsheet. Go check it out. Uh, let's do this Kathy Wood video again. This is one I didn't watch in advance. Her company or her investment firm, ARK Invest, has the price of Bitcoin hitting 1.3 million by the year 2030. Um, you can download it from the internet. I've shown you that before. I believe it's the big ideas 2022. Let me look. Yeah, you can tell I've done this search before. So if you want to download it, go here, Big Ideas Report, ARK Invest. Just give them your email and whatever information it has over here on the side. They'll let you too big for me to share or for me to send to all of you, but you can download it yourselves. Where in the world would I have it? Mm. I was going to share it with you all. Mm. If it's not here, it is here. I was going to say, if it's not here, I'm going to quit looking for it. But I do have it here with all my other spreadsheets I've been saving throughout the year as archives, just in case prior spreadsheet. But this is it. Arc Ideas, Arc Big Ideas 2022. The whole article is like over 100 pages long, and it's all worth reading. I don't know why it's not maximizing. Here we go. Uh, the important stuff, you can see the table of contents here. Bitcoin starts on page 44. And I've gone over this in a prior video, but essentially they give their arguments why Bitcoin's going to hit $1.3 million by the year 2030. Um, you can scroll through all this and read it all yourselves. But the, I mean, the El Salvador, the first nation state, I believe two others have started. There's some country in Africa, is it Central Africa Republic? And I believe another country in Latin America or South America that it might be Panama where they're not actually making Bitcoin legal tender, but they don't have an official currency. They've just been using the US dollar for the past 100 years. Well, they're, I think, I believe Bitcoin had been illegal in Panama up until very recently, or they're trying to pass legislation, le le legislation which will make Bitcoin legal in Panama, which definitely opens the door for it to take over, not only El Salvador and Central Africa Republic, but also Panama. So the clear is things taking off. Um, yeah, this is it. $1.36 million by the year 2030 and all their arguments for it. So whether it's, you know, these are current things which exist in the world, gold, corporate treasury, institutional investment, seizure resistant asset, nation state treasury, economic settlement network, emerging market currency and remittance networks. All these are currently um, invested or denominated in things outside of Bitcoin. But if 50% of the remittance network goes into Bitcoin, if 10% of the emerging market currency goes into Bitcoin, if the economic settlement network goes into Bitcoin, 25% of 1%, just 1% of nation state treasury goes into it, just 5% of global HNW1 wealth, 2.55% of institutional asset base, 5% of cash of the S&P 500 companies, and 50% of gold. If all those things happen and go into Bitcoin, you get to $1.36 million Bitcoin. I've already made arguments that, you know, based on the number of millionaires in the world, if a proportion portion of them put their assets into Bitcoin, how Bitcoin can hit two, $3 million per coin. Um, you know, looking at this 401k thing, I don't even think this thing gets into 401k much because it's a more recent topic, which came up with Fidelity offering it to certain employers. Well, if 1% of 401ks in the United States put their money into Bitcoin, that's an extra $73 billion going into Bitcoin. And based on the multiplier effect, if it's a 10x multiplier, you would see the price of Bitcoin double instantly. If just $73 billion from 401ks entered the Bitcoin market through their 401k. Remember, this is a $7.3 trillion industry for retirement through 401ks. If a greater percentage than 1% went into Bitcoin because of FOMO, you know, people realize how much better Bitcoin is than cash, than gold, than the stock market, than bonds. Watch out. Bitcoin is going to absolutely explode and make this $1.36 million mark look like nothing. So anyway, that's the end of that. Let's see what Kathy Wood has to you say. You know, it's somewhere between 2026 and 2030 is mm -hmm. where we think that million dollars from $40,000. I don't think people believe me when I said it on stage, get Bitcoin uh, 2022, uh, but I meant it. And many people think, okay, so you're assuming that institutional investors become huge holders of Bitcoin. 
No, we're not. We're assuming, though, that they will move in gradually, and uh, by the time we hit a million dollars plus, uh, they will have a two and a half percent exposure to Bitcoin. Kathy Wood, the founder of ARK Investment Management, continues to urge people to buy more Bitcoin now, while it is still around $40,000, as she believes Bitcoin is a great asset that has the potential to thrive well in the near future. While speaking in an interview with Yahoo Finance, the renowned innovative thinker predicts that Bitcoin will hit $1 million per coin between 2026 and 2030. Can you wait that long? I can. So hopefully you can get to one Bitcoin, but even if you don't get to one Bitcoin, if you get to like half a Bitcoin, a quarter of a Bitcoin, you're still going to see potentially life-changing wealth through that. And either way, however much Bitcoin you buy, you're going to have more value, more net worth in the future because of it. And so how life-changing it is to you depends how much you can put into the market now, how long you can hold and so forth, you know, based on your different life circumstances of future and retirement. Of course, all that's going to you know, affect how much Bitcoin you need. You can use my spreadsheet here. Don't forget that here. This is how much tab in blue helps you determine how much you need to invest for a certain period of time. This has, has it out to 300, 260 weeks. You would want to invest $250 per week for 260 weeks to achieve different retirement objectives that the spreadsheet is currently set up for, you know, based on the amount of principal you need to live, uh, the percent interest you can get from Planet Finance. Hopefully you do that as opposed to stocks or bonds or CDs or stable coins. Stable coins would be okay. I can understand using stable coins at Planet Finance to get a lower percentage, but then you're exposed to less volatility. That's fine. But I'm pretty much going for broke because I love Planet Finance. But anyway, use the spreadsheet. Don't forget these other blue tabs. You know, try to come up with your own projections over time up to the next Bitcoin halving projected to be the end of March 2024. Prices you're looking for different coins to reach. If they don't reach those price targets, maybe that creates a good buying opportunity for you. If we're ahead of schedule, that just, you know, hopefully helps you out psychologically that we're more on track. This is the tab which talks about number of millionaires in the world and how you come up with various Bitcoin prices based on millionaires is getting interested in Bitcoin. It's a more simple model than the Kathy Wood Big Ideas article. But still, if you're just wondering how in the world could Bitcoin go from 40,000, which it's actually under 40,000 right now on May 1st, 2022, how in the world could Bitcoin hit a million dollars? That seems just like some pyramid scheme, some Ponzi scheme. This can't be real. Well, this is a simplistic model. Kathy Wood gets into more realistic reasons why Bitcoin could hit 1.3 million by the year 2030. But for me, if I just think of millionaires getting interested in Bitcoin, that millionaires became millionaires, it could be through inheritance or luck, but probably through smart financial strategies throughout their life. Well, I consider Bitcoin a smart financial strategy. So as Bitcoin becomes more viable and the cases for Bitcoin, you know, as opposed to Warren Buffett, who's wouldn't buy all the Bitcoin in the world for $25, as people realize this thing could actually be very valuable. Not every millionaire in the world can own one Bitcoin. And that thought always blows me away that if millionaires are vain and they're like, I want to own one Bitcoin, Bitcoin. This thing's important. Not every millionaire in the world can own one Bitcoin. There's going to be millionaires who desperately want to own one Bitcoin, and they might be able to get 0.2 if they're lucky. Think about that. And then don't forget the goals tab here. This helps you come up with your own goals. Uh, my investing strategy is get paid and put it instantly into Bitcoin. So, you know, I have a hard time doing it biweekly or, you know, on a constant basis. I guess I do it on a constant basis. I just throw all my money in once I get paid. But you know, I'll joking aside, is this helps you stay on track to achieve certain goals. This tells you, helps you determine how much you should invest at constant time periods or variable time periods. You can play around with the spreadsheet, but this helps you achieve your goals over time based on various assumptions. Getting to the prices for today. Um, I mean, if you go back to January 1st, everything's in the red except for Aqua. Way to go, Aqua at Planet Finance. Um, Talk about me getting in at the right time as I got some aqua at around the $85 mark, I believe. And now it's about 350, which is off of its recent highs of what, 450? So I'm very proud of my aqua investment. That's helping me out in 2020. Otherwise, I'm getting decimated. As, as you can tell, the majority of my portfolio is in Bitcoin. I was going to say Bitcurium. I don't know. I, I was trying to combine Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bit Ethereum? Yeah. Anyway. The majority of my investments in Bitcoin and Ethereum and relative to the rest of the markets, it's decreased the least. So that is helping me out in 2022. SafeMoon's absolutely getting decimated. I want to get some more, but I don't know if you all have this issue. Leave your comments in the comments section. But when I try to get SafeMoon, 
the price it says, I'm able to get a much lower quantity based on the amount I want to buy in BNB. You know, it says the price of Safe Moon is below 0 0.0005, and I have $500 worth of BNB. So my head tells me I should be able to get a million Safe Moon out of that. It's telling me I could get 800,000. So I understand there's a 10% tax on Safe Moon transactions, but it seems like the amount of Safe Moon I'm able to get based on quoted current prices is not worth it for me to invest in right now. So I'm not able to get it at the prices it says it's selling at. So that's kind of discouraged me. I've gotten it up to 0.5% of my portfolio. I guess right now I'm satisfied with that. Um, if you go over to the right here, you can see my coins. I've actually, and actually this is already a 30 minute video. I better speed this up. Right now I've got slightly over 5 million Safe Moon, but I've gone ahead and integrated this into the spreadsheet that when I sell it, it's probably gonna still have a 10% tax. So I'll probably only realize 90% of what I have. So I'm integrating that in for my own financial planning. I also noticed an issue with the formula, I believe is this right here. Yeah, I actually had this linking to the wrong part of the daily tabs. And now the proportion of coins in my portfolio, I was seeing gamma B and B was still in the 0.1% range and I had been buying. I'm like, what's going on here? This is a formula issue. So, hey, I, I, I like to, to consider myself an Excel wizard, but I make mistakes too, but I fixed the issue. Things should be working better now. Um, in terms of other things I'm noticing in terms of prices, well, because gamma is down to below 29 cents, you're going to see my daily passive income down. This is a little bit understated because, again, I just bought some gamma BNB yesterday, so it resets the amount I have in my portfolio, and it kind of throws off my daily computations with the formulas I have. So my current return should be more than $8 daily. But with that being said, I was getting $17 daily of passive income. It has come down if for no other reason because gamma was above the 50 cent range and it's now below the 29 cent range. So eight, $9 per day of passive income isn't that bad, but my goal is still to get that up to $350 per day in the next two years. I think I can get there based on me just investing every paycheck and seeing appreciation in the gamma and aqua coins at Planet Finance. Can it be done? What do you think? Am I being too optimistic? Optimistic, or is this a realistic goal? Leave your comments in the comments section. Um, down, don't forget to download the spreadsheet at unm.nu. I think that's really all I have for today. Um, yeah, I don't have anything on my phone I want to share with all of you. Actually, I do. I lie. Let me get the Bronx video up here ready to go. Um, okay, there we go. So at least that's queued up. Phone's dying, but I should be able to at least get through the next couple of minutes here. Uh, let's go ahead and share content. Oh, I've got to quit sharing here. And I got seven minutes. Okay, I'm good to go. Let's get this done. Okay. Uh, this is just some food I had at O'Neill's. This is a uh, Reuben sandwich, but with potato pancake as the bread for the outside of the sandwich. Very good. This is the big appetizer we shared, me, my mom, and grandma, some jalapeno, some buffalo cauliflower, some sweet potato fries. Uh, I think you saw some onion rings and then some cheese curds. Again, there's my corned beef. It is a wonderful uh, Reuben sandwich. Highly recommended. Um, is this playing? This is a lizard I had in my backyard. Always been a fan of frogs, lizards, of course, Swizzle. May she rest in peace. But there's a little lizard back there just chilling out, enjoying the sun, enjoying the safety in my backyard. Uh, happy lizard. And I think this one, I just kind of zoom in on it right here. A healthy, happy lizard. Hopefully it hasn't been eaten by a roadrunner yet. A ton of roadrunners in my neighborhood. And these are some games I played on Friday. Crusaders and Five Tribes. It's good stuff. I think that's all I wanted to share with all of you. Stop sharing. Come on. Okay, so now I should be able to share the screen. And sound should be on. So don't forget to remember these 10 people that died in a Bronx fire last night due to a fire. Let's see here. Is this going to work? My iPhone's not back, but let's go and play this. 
10 people died in the Bronx last night due to a fire that killed 10 people in the Bronx last night during a fire. Fire officials say all 10 people died due to the fire, which was too hot for their bodies. <laughs> May they rest in peace. May you have a wonderful week. We'll be in touch. God bless. Thank you again for watching this video from your UNM.NU. This is the disclaimer. This is not financial advice. The information from UNM.NU, University of New Money, and University of New Mercy, and any of these other likenesses is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell that way you're notified of all future videos which come out from the channel. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you're looking forward to the next.